Good morning, congregants and friends of Grace United Methodist Church, and happy Father's Day to all our loving fathers out there. Today, our sermon is titled, The Father Who Never Sleeps, and it comes from the book of Genesis, the 21st chapter, beginning at the 8th verse through the 21st verse, which reads, The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed, because the boy and the, because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring bring shall be named after you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. So, most people say in a couple, it's the mother who loses the sleep. But yet we live on a planet, especially today, where fathers have a more and more, have more of a role in their family lives than they once did in the 1950s or even the 60s. Oh yes, we also refer to our father in heaven, as, as God is our father in heaven. But some people, and I still believe they are in the minority, feel that God is a woman. Well, that's up to your own choosing how you choose to think of that, but I think the majority still refer to God and think of him as a male person. Now, fathers like mothers take on the parenting role to their children, and although the mother's role began before the child was born, the father these days quickly jumps in. Back in the 1950s, the man was never in the delivery room when a child was born. In the 60s, was a revolutionary time because some of the men, the brave ones, were saying, I want to be there. Wow, that was unheard of. And slowly but surely, the hospital staff would allow the men to be there. And now it's common. It's expected that the man be there when the child is born. Back in the 1980s, we discovered a comedy that was a big hit, and it was called Mr. Mom. It was in 1983, and it was a lighthearted comedy and it has, was at the time a very funny concept to think of a man staying home with, with the children and being their sole parent while the mother went out to work. Just the opposite of the norm of the past. But however, this really caught on. And we still refer to that movie title as now a term, Mr. Mom, when we think of a man who stays at home and works from home or simply has the full-time role of caretaker for the children while the mother works. And it may still be funny at times, I'm sure. However, many men excel in this role. And the women are in the military, they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're all kinds of professions that 50, 60 years ago never happened. Some of the famous people, even in Hollywood, raised their own children without a female presence. And you may know some of the names. Liam Neeson, Usher, Dean Cain. He was still probably best known as Superman. But he became Super Dad. But, however, who the model is for this, the first famous father has always been God. In the book of Genesis, we have this story of a father who may have made a very poor choice. He was afraid of his wife and her being so upset because even though it was her idea to give the slave woman to her husband to have a child with when she was barren, she now that she had a child of her own, 
has felt threatened in some way. She worries that the other child will get it all and her child Isaac will not. God reassures Abraham and tells him, No, your sons both will inherit nations, but it is, it is from your son Isaac that all the children will come that I am talking of that will make this great nation that I speak of. And it is because of this father, God, that never sleeps that he was able to save the child and the mother who were sent away and would have surely died without his intervention. Now Abraham was a man of wealth. He had land. He had possessions and cattle and slaves. And Abraham was desperate to become a father, and he prayed to God about it very often. And God had made this big promise to Abraham and his children that his children would outnumber the stars in the evening sky. And yet Abraham's wife Sarah had no children and was unable to conceive. But finally, as we discussed in the last sermon, she was able to have that long-awaited child, and it was a boy, and they named him Isaac. Now, as much as Abraham loved his son, by this time he was his second son. And this first woman that had his child was not a wife, but a possession, an Egyptian slave. And she was brought to this household originally to tend to Sarah's needs. But now that Abraham had his heirs in place, the wife, Sarah, became very jealous. It's terrible when people become jealous because it turns them into people that they would not normally be. It causes them to make statements and to take actions that's just out of their character. And Sarah had a lot of mood swings, no doubt, at this time. And she finally was becoming very ugly towards Hagar, and just she just didn't deserve that. But Sarah did not act well in her actions either. So it was decided that even though Abraham knew it was probably the wrong thing to do, God told him and gave him encouragement not to worry that the child would be taken care of if he did indeed send her away. So he did. Now, most men do not have a wife and another woman in their households that are both mothers of the children. So Abraham must have lost a lot of sleep over his decision. And what was he to do? But God gave him the proper guidance. Now, Ishmael, his first son, would also become a strong nation. And it must have been very difficult to send Hagar away, especially with the child. And he was such a wealthy man. He had everything he could have needed to separate them and perhaps set her up somewhere. But that's not how it happened. And he, she was sent away with only a skin of water and some bread. Sounds very cruel. But that's exactly the story that it tells us. Now, fathers today have many obligations, from breadwinner to teacher. I see the man next door, how he teaches his children how to do many things. The eight-year-old twins, girls, are learning how to use the power mower with assistance, of course. He kind of stands behind them. I saw them the one day. It was very cute. In a winter, they enjoy, the kids enjoy our large snow piles, and he's always out there playing with them. And a father... So it's not always about just playing with the children. My father entertained me. He played harmonica. He taught me songs in German. He taught me German. And when he was able to play some games with me, although they were indoor, due to his disabilities, he did. Fathers are not always the same, you see. And they're each very unique. And some do many more things with their family than others do. Some are barely there, unfortunately. Yet, when they are home, it seems that Dad is the best parent ever when they take those great trips and they go to special places for vacations and recreation. And mothers, sometimes they just get that rap of being the bad guy, like Sarah does in this story. She was the bad guy. But other fathers may not be around at all. And for Ishmael, his father was no longer going to be in his life, it seems. However, we do know from the text in Genesis yet that he did stay connected to his father Abraham, as when Abraham passed, Ishmael is present. But there was another father at work in this story, and that was God himself. Hagar was alone. She was in the desert. She was frightened. She didn't think she was going to make it back to her family in Egypt or anywhere else before she would pass, and she certainly didn't want to see her child die. She didn't know what to do. But having lived with Abraham for so long, she took a risk and thought, I might as well pray to this God of his. Because, of course, being Egyptian, she would have prayed to many gods. But 
God was already listening because God never sleeps. He's that father that never sleeps. And she cries out. And the child, no doubt, was upset and crying somewhere, but she had hit him the best she could under a bush out of the penetrating heat. But the angel asked Hagar what she needed because God had sent the angel to find out what should be done. And, of course, God already had a plan. And he made sure that Hagar had what she needed to survive. And Ishmael, in his, whole, his, in his whole life, as he grew to a man and later became father to the Arab nation, was succeeding in what was told to Abraham from the very beginning, that his descendants would outnumber the stars in the sky. So you see, our father in heaven is never asleep. But we, we need to rest. Our human bodies can't really take long periods of being awake and working and constantly doing one thing or another, and we have to rest. But God never sleeps. He doesn't have to. We have some wonderful fathers, but they're only able to do what they do because God is helping them too. When we think of our earthly fathers, we can see God's assistance in their parenting skills. Even though some can't go outside and play with their children, God intervenes enough that they are allowed to have moments where they're not feeling so bad, that they have good days and they have bad days, but they have those good days where they have more strength from, given from God so they can play with their children. And God helped Hagar when she was ready to give up. Not because she prayed to him specifically for help, but because he couldn't let his children die in the desert. God is a loving father. And even though Hagar may not have known the true God her whole life, God was not going to make that any different because she was still his child. And he heard the cries of the boy, and he called out to Hagar from heaven. Now, fathers can be pretty heroic at times. Certainly many of you could probably tell some heroic acts that your fathers had performed. Some of you may have had true hero fathers. Maybe they were in the service. Maybe they were in some type of battle. Maybe they're police officers. Whatever their job may be, you probably all look up to them as heroes of some sort. But they don't have to have the specific job of a policeman or a fireman or a doctor or a lawyer to be a hero. They can just be a hero for being your father. And we all need God more often than we think we do. We cry out to him and he hears our cries. He hears us whether we're in our beds at night upset, whether we're sitting on the couch watching TV, or whether we're out somewhere and we've been lost and we can't figure out the GPS and the world is, cha is going on around us and cars are whizzing by and he helps us when we cry out to him for need. It would have been easy for God to ignore this Egyptian woman because she didn't believe in him, not really. She had all her beliefs in the idols, but again, she lived with Abraham long enough and she knew she was raising her child probably a little bit differently because of his father on earth. Fathers are really special people and God must have thought so too because didn't he give his own son Jesus an earthly father in Joseph? No doubt Joseph would play with young Jesus we know he taught him his trade. We know that he spent a lot of time with him. We don't know when he disappeared from his life, but we do assume by the crucifixion he had passed on. But Jesus was the firstborn to Mary and Joseph. And even though Joseph was technically a stepfather, that never mattered to Joseph. How often is it in today's society where people divorce and remarry and combine families to have a father figure that is not necessarily the biological father? A father is simply the male person in your life who loves you unconditionally and cares for your needs and answers some of those tough questions and supports you no matter how many mistakes you may make. A good father is all of these and many more. Fathers are made. They're not assigned. They're not hired. They're not forced to be fathers. Today, as we honor all of our fathers, let us not forget the father who never sleeps. Our Father in Heaven is a Father who never sleeps. He hears our cries, even when we're small, even when we're weak. Amen. At this time, let us bow our hearts and our heads in prayer. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, on this Father's Day, let us remember all of the fathers in our lives, but most of all, we give thanks to you, O Father in Heaven. We know that you are with us. We know that you are guiding us. We know that you look down on us and see us as weak children in your need, and we are in need of you. 
Lord, as we move forward and things start to become a little bit more normal in our world once again, we thank you for that. We pray for continued guidance as you develop our plans and allow us to move forward in reopening our buildings. Lord, we pray that you will be with all the pastors and all the persons who are putting together the services, the groups of trustees that are making the plans, the people that are coming in and cleaning our buildings to make them safe and sanitary. We pray for our bishop, Bishop Johnson, who has taken on extra time for you. And Lord, we appreciate her in our denomination. We pray for our new district superintendent, Dr. Foster, as he begins his duties. And we pray that you will give him the guidance and help he needs. And Lord, we pray for all the fathers in the world, those who are taking care of their children on their own, those who are there with their families, those who may perhaps not be biological fathers to their children, but yet indeed are fathers in every true sense of the word. We pray for our fathers who we no longer see and know that they are there with you this day in glory. And we pray that they may be able to look down on us and smile, knowing that we have done well. Lord, we pray for our military. We pray that you will keep them safe as they serve us and honor us by protecting our borders and our country. And Lord, we pray for everyone in the church that is on the prayer list and who has joys and concerns. We pray for all those who are in need of an answer to some testing they may have had done or a diagnosis which they know is dire. And we just pray for peace for those persons, Lord. We just pray for peace. Lord, once again, we thank you, our Father in heaven, as we pray the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Before I go today, just a few housekeeping ideas and some concerns. Just want to let you know we are planning on reopening the church for services on July 5th. However, if you are uncomfortable attending a service in the building, you may stay in your cars or go down to the little park back here in Telford Community Park. And you from there, if you tune your radios on your FM stations to 89.5, you will be able to pick up the service. Ed Johnson has very kindly undertaken the endeavor to set this up, and it is working, it has been tested. However, if you are brave, and we hope you are, and will be attending service with us, now that the church will be, the county will be going into the green zone as of the 26th, we don't have to number, worry about the numbers in the church. We would love to have more than 250 in attendance, but that is the limit, so we're good. And we have everything set up this morning. The trustees were at the church, and they were setting up some signage for your help and to guide you. And we will have to take temps, and we will have to require you to wear masks. There will be no singing, but we will provide plenty of music. We will have some live music by George, who will be playing the organ, and hopefully Jeannie, who will be playing the piano and maybe Beth. As well, we will have perhaps some solos. We don't know yet, but we are certainly making every endeavor to contact people and get everything rolling again. Our first service will also be communion. Now, this is important. Should you wish to bring your own bread for the communion service, you should. You can bring it in a little plastic baggie and bring it in a handbag or whatever. If you do not, there are individual packs of crackers, which we will have available to you on a table the lobby area to pick up before you go into the sanctuary. And we will use those and not have any beverage as is the mandate right now of the bishop. We don't know how long we'll have to go on with this process, but we will continue to have a normal as possible communion service for you, and that will be that first day we reopen. So there will be two doors open. The front doors will be open, and the door going down the steps to towards Fellowship Hall from the parking lot will be open for your use. Please do not go to the office door. It will remain locked. Please be punctual as at 1025 or approximately at that time, we will have to lock the doors for security features as we have been doing and should have been doing. So we welcome you back. We hope you will be present, and we definitely hope you have a wonderful Father's Day. 
if not just in memory of your father, perhaps with your fathers yet. And just be blessed and know that we are all thinking of one another as we move forward into this time. We thank you for your attendance. We thank you for your loyalty. Peace of the Lord be with you.